On this week's hunt, Trav, Cheese, and I are in the mountainous grasslands of the Sonora Desert. I'm excited. Let's go. We met up with my friend Bobby Boido, the proud owner of Coos Outfitters. A veteran desert whitetail hunter, Bobby has given us access to one of his prime hunting locales. For me, this is unreal. I've, it's my first time in Mexico, and I'm in one of the nicest places in Mexico, probably. <laughs> Now it's mid-January, and in the land of desert whitetails, it's the time of year where antlers clash in the fight for dominance and breeding rights. In this region, water's scarce, the rocks are sharp, the vegetation is thorny, but the deer are plentiful. I just bought a pretty nice bug. Our adventure begins in the Sierra Madre Mountains in eastern Sonora. With an elevation of 7,500 feet, they're covered in oak and mesquite, with a mix of cactus and brush. This combination of flora and elevation creates the perfect habitat for the gray ghost. As soon as they stop, either stop moving or you put your binos down, they're gone. The desert whitetail, also known as Coos Whitetail, or more commonly nicknamed the Grey Ghost, for its ability to seemingly vanish in front of your eyes. They're just like on such high alert all the time. Is a small bodied deer, where a mature buck will weigh on average just 90 to 100 pounds and stand only 30 inches at the shoulder. We're here for five days on a self-guided backpack hunt. Trav, Cheese and I all have deer tags in our pocket. And this morning, before we even left the ranch house, we picked up a couple of deer on the mountain. Uh, I think that's a buck. Yeah. Uh, so same knoll, yeah. go to the top of that knoll, mm -hmm. right to the edge, there's a in deer. The sun? Yeah, just on the edge of the sun. All right guys, so we got in late last night and this morning we're just getting set up to do a bit of target practice to make sure that the rifles are on after the drive. But before we did, I just figured we'd glass this off here. And we just picked up a couple does and a pretty decent buck. So on this trip, there's Trav, me, and Cheese. And this is Cheese's first time where he's ever going to be able to hunt. So Cheese ain't out here to shoot himself a giant. He just wants to get himself a nice meat buck. So I think we're going to try and make this happen. See if Cheese can put the smack on him. Okay, so we got those two deer, we got that buck. I think we should glass this off a little more before we, we make this this deal here. I just picked up another deer. Not really sure what it is though. There it is, I got her on here. I think it's a doe. But... It's a nice thing about this big lens, you can really zoom in on these deer. It's this tree here, right? Yeah. It's in front of? Yeah, and uh, can you see the top of that knoll? Because he's standing right, oh, he just bedded. Yeah, that buck just bedded down now. He's he's right in the sun, Mitch. I don't know if he... Is there, he's underneath a tree, right? Uh, no, not anymore. He went over to the right just a bit, like basically the top, top of that knoll. Yeah. Slightly to the, no, he's right on the top of that knoll. All right, guys, so before we go and put a first play on this buck, um, most of you don't even know who Cheese is because he's behind the lens. So, Cheese, introduce yourself, bro. It's Cheese here, a cameraman, always behind the lens, never hunted before. And now we're in Mexico, first buck, 
I'm excited. <laughs> Let's go. We got a little bit of a sneak plan. Right now that buck's at about 450. So we're just gonna get in. We're gonna try and get cheese under two. Um, we, this gun here can shoot dead on, dead to nuts up to 300 yards, but cheese never shot that far. So we gotta get him in there under 200, try about 150. Yeah. We're gonna take our time, nice and calm. We're gonna put him to sleep, buddy. He's not a giant buck, but we got three deer to kill here. We got five days. And we gotta hike our asses up over that mountain here for the next few days and then keep packing deer back off of here because it gets so hot in the midday. So right now we're still close to the ranch house. If we kill this deer, it's one off the list. And uh, I mean, you'll still be happy, cat, won't you? We get to eat some tendies. First off, while we're going through it, yeah. Right now, this gun's on fire, not safe, okay? Yeah. So, oh, what the hell? One sec. Okay, there you go. So, yeah. safety on. Safe. So, we're going to open this thing up. Yep. We're going to put three down. Three okay, down. so you just go like this, push down. No, 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 not in. Yeah. Down. Oh, push like oh, down. Duh. There you go. Oh, I see. Okay, so you want to load up three. Okay, now don't load the gun. So, the yeah. way that you don't load it, so you actually push down here like this, yeah. and the bullet's over top. Now you can close the chamber. So now okay. there's no bullet in there. Okay? All right, cool. So back up here. So you've got your safe here, your yeah. safe's on, safe. and no bullet in the gun. Yeah, so S is no fire. That's right. No Keep fire. your finger yeah. out of that trigger loop until you're ready to pull the trigger, okay? okay? Yeah. Okay. So Trav's up in position. He's on top of the hill up there. So he's got a real good line on this buck. Cheese and I now are going to start moving through all these sage bushes here, nice and quiet, nice and easy. There could be deer in there, so we yeah. don't want to bump them. Do you need a pee? No. Are you sure? I'm good. You, before you shoot that deer, your bladder's gonna start going. Are you feeling nervous? <laughs> yeah, I'm really nervous. Okay. So take some deep breaths. We just gotta be nice and walk nice and slow. Deep breaths, because when you're, when you're there, you don't want to be shaking. We make sure that we're nice and stable, okay? Okay. All right, let's do this. Take our time, all right? Now, over the years, Cheese has been on plenty of stalks with me, but he's never been the one in front of the camera. So as we moved along through the noisy mesquite, I only had to point the way, and his newfound stalking skills brought him right where he needed to be. See that big rock right there? He's kind of feeding in that direction. We could just get up behind that. That should put us within a pretty good range of him. Cheese and Mitch are on the stock. They're below me. I got the buck just across canyon. He's just feeding. He's not going anywhere because he's got some does around there. These deer are so hard to see. I look. Watching him, he takes a couple steps, he disappears. But I think we're in a good spot here. Now, if you've never hunted coos deer, there's one thing you need to know about these guys. They are extremely skittish. Now, fortunately for us, as we closed the distance, he was hot on a doe's trail, and she was all he had on his mind. So I had to relocate a little bit. Um, where I was, I lost track of Mitch and Cheese, so I couldn't tell if they're getting set up or anything like that. And I relocated um, to another spot. And I can't find that buck, but I, I found the doe that he was after, so I just gotta do a little bit of glassing, see if I can find that buck again. That way I can signal these guys in, because they're within 125 yards right now, and I don't think they realize that. All right, there we got that buck here. He's at 172 right now. Cheese up here, get him set up. Make sure he's good, comfortable, prone. That buck's standing broadside. We have lots of time. Nice and easy, Cheese, nice and easy. Okay, he's looking over here. Take off your bino harness. Get under there, there you go. There you go. Look around in those shade trees. He's, it's his butt is facing us. Okay, Trav's on him. Put the safety off. Make sure you got him dead to rights. Where's your crosshairs right now? Just right on his chest. Right on it. Is he looking at us? He's raking. He's, he's looking up. He's raking. Okay. Just wait until you have a nice shot. 
where you can put it right behind his shoulder, okay? Okay, he looks pretty good in broadside. So whenever you're ready, wait till he lifts his head, okay? Take it whenever you're ready. Nice deep breath and let him have it. Yeah, so right when he looked this way, um, I thought I'm gonna take a shot. I took a shot, but I never shot this gun before and the, the kickback was, was unexpected, so. It move on me so like i kind of lost it but i think trap saw saw the whole shot so he said put a good shot like i think i'm pretty confident i, I put a good shot and i didn't i didn't move or anything it was mitch set it up for me pretty good the cross right 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 here so i think i put a good shot i'm pretty excited <laughs> <laughs> oh wow that's good How far you think that was? It was uh, 197. I lied to you to make you not feel so bad. <laughs> that was good though. <laughs> really good. I was tearing up. I don't know if you see the camera. They were tearing up there, like just focus, dead focus on them. They want to like lose sight on them. Just, uh, yeah, well, I never really looked into scope before. So my first time of everything. First time in Sonora, Mexico. <laughs> first day. First time looking at the scope. <laughs> Fuck <Bucked> down. <laughs> the scope. <laughs> All right. This looks like right where she shot that buck. Let's see if we find the blood trail or what. Trav's up on the ridge there. So he could probably just walk us right into it. But. He's right in here somewhere, Chav is saying. This is nice. Chav's just watching from the other side there. Up here somewhere. You see him? Where is he? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Oh man. <laughs> Cute little guy. Three by two. Oh man. Never thought I would be, I would get my first deer in Mexico. <laughs> this dude. Oh man. What do you think of that body size? It's pretty small. You can tell it's rotten, man. Striking all these trees. Oh man. Thank you, Mitch, for putting me in here. No problem, brother. No problem. First buck. My first big game. <laughs> Is it a big game? That's Call a big, big game. game. Oh, yeah, it's a big game. <laughs> Alright guys, so Cheese's first buck. A lot of first for cheese on this one, but now, uh, Chi's been watching me break animals down for a couple of years now. So today I'm just gonna stand back and see if he learned anything behind the lens in the last couple of years and see what you got here. Yeah. You got yourself your own knife? Yeah, I got it. Uh, what do you got? Got this little little baby here from Huto, actually. Ooh, Huto knife. Oh, it's actually a pretty nice knife. Sweet. Haven't seen these yet. I got a feeling, it says. I got a feeling. That's cute. Hoot all right. Let's see what this nice got, cheese. All right. These scenes may seem a little gruesome. However, it's all part of the process. And in my opinion, if you take an animal's life, you should understand what is required of you to turn that carcass into meat. 
and you feel the esophagus up there, his throat. It's gonna be right back here, like as high up as you can go, and then down at the back. It's gonna be a tube like that. Okay, so. Maybe, yeah, 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 yeah it is, is okay. Yeah, yeah. So, careful with your knife, yeah. but when you go in there, don't cut your own hand, yeah. go beside your hand, and then cut above your hand. So you're holding it like this, cut up here, not close to your hand, okay? okay. Nice and easy. Education and the passing down of knowledge and traditions is the foundation of cultures. And hunting is one piece of our culture that is quickly disappearing. In my traditions, when you harvest your first animal, you wear its blood. And this is one that usually takes most newcomers by surprise. Hey, get a little war paint on there. Initiation <laughs> <laughs> for cheesy boy. Okay, grab these guys over top like this. You're gonna get some blood on your back here. Okay, and then bring that head over. There you go. Okay, I'll give you a hand to stand up. Just make sure you can hold it, okay? Hold the legs and the head. Because if the head moves, yeah, with this arm, with this arm. Just like that, like that. Hold that head in, okay? Yeah. Okay, give me a sec. It's only a short hike back down the mountain to the ranch house. And Cheese, who is used to lugging his camera gear around the mountains, made short work of this pack out and took the deer out whole on his back. Watching Cheese pack this deer off the mountain is a culmination of years of work and a very proud moment for me as a teacher. I always relish the opportunity to bring new people into the process and help them grow as hunters and outdoorsmen. All right, well, we're at the ranch house now. Just gotta get this deer broken down quick here because it's hot out. The temperature swings here are just wild. It goes from like plus two degrees in the morning to 20 something degrees right now outside. So this meat wouldn't last too long just hanging out unless we get it all broken down and put it in the shade. But fortunately here at the ranch house, they got uh, some freezers. So we're gonna take an extra hour, get it completely broken down, packaged up, put in a bag so we can bring it home with us. As Trav and I finished processing the deer, we started loading up the meat into freezer bags and we noticed larva laying on the table and on the ground coming out of the buck's head. Upon further inspection of the deer's nasal cavity and throat, we found a couple dozen nasty looking bugs known in the scientific world as cephanemia, more commonly known to hunters and outdoorsmen as nasal bots. Imagine having those inside your nose. Like, <laughs> one day you just sneeze, it's like <laughs> bugs start flying out of your nose. Ugh. Oh my God. Oh, is that a big one here or what? I don't know what that is. They're all over the table. Uh, like, uh, I've never seen that on any of whitetail or anything like that in, in Canada or in Ontario anyways. I don't know if BC's got these, but it's pretty disgusting. Yeah, the only time I've seen them was down here. I've never seen anything else. Now at this point, you'd be forgiven to think that these unpleasantly squirming, maggot-looking larvae may in some way mean that the deer is sick and not fit for human consumption. However, that is simply not the case. Bot flies are actually quite common from northern Mexico through the continental United States and they even range into southern Canada. So to sum it up for you, the way these flies work is a mature female fly will land on an unsuspecting deer and lay larva in the nasal passages and eye ducts, 
and they will do this on most members of the deer family, including whitetail, mule deer, and even elk. So the next time you're out and you see these little suckers, don't be alarmed. It's all just part of the deer cycle of life. Next time on Alpine Carnivore. There's some pretty cool rut action happening right now. He's pushing them around like crazy. What am I gonna do here? Just miss another time here? He just ran into a pile of does and the does started scattering. You don't really want to walk right through here in the dark.